My name is Leslie Levy, and I have the great honor to be the director of the International Folk Museum at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. And I want to welcome everybody who is with us today. It's wonderful to have people here on Earth Day. And um, this has been, oh, I think almost a year in planning um, to at least it was about a year ago that we started visiting and talking about the wonderful opportunities that lie in front of us and, and, and things that we could do together as partnerships. And so um, initially, I just want to welcome Luana Rubin, the president and co-founder of eQuilter.com, as well as Paul Jolly with Earthworks. And I'm going to just initially turn it over to Jan Morrill at Earthworks and let her say a few words. Hey, thank you very much, Leslie, and very nice to see all your faces. So my name is Jan Morrill. I work for Earthworks and I'm part of the international mining team there. Uh, I'm also a very amateur quilter, um, but I learned to sew and quilt for my mom on a treadle sewing machine. And I'm currently working on a uh, quilt based on the style that my great grandmother did for um, using old house coats to piece together. Um, Wonderful. Yeah different parts of the quote. So I'm very happy to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and thank you very much for having um, me to represent Earthworks and thank you to Luana for your wonderful support. We really appreciate it. Uh, Earthworks is a national environmental organization that works to protect communities from the dangers of extractive industries like mining or um, gas, natural gas and oil. Uh, we're committed to reining in dangerous practices from mining um, companies and uh, we see that as important for a couple reasons. One, because mining creates an enormous amount of waste that is very dangerous to local communities. So for example, a, a ring, will, a single gold ring can um, require up to 20 tons, usually more, of waste to be created. Uh, mining is also really toxic and there's a, the mining industry is one of the biggest polluters in the United States. Wow. Uh, in 2018, there was 1.8 billion pounds of toxins released by the mining industry. And then also when mines cease operating, they still create problems, right? So with Luana's yeah. beautiful quilt, she did an amazing job showing the example of how an abandoned mine, like the one at Gold King in Colorado, can create um, toxic releases of pollutants and chemicals years after the mine is done operating and contaminate hundreds of miles of, of rivers and watersheds. Um, so we think that this work is really important. We appreciate the support and I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Thanks, well, Leslie. Well, thanks, Jan. Um, and thank you for explaining a little bit about what Earthworks does. It helps to really put into perspective why, um, why our three organizations have partnered together for this wonderful opportunity. Most people wouldn't think of us as being um, natural partners, but um, of course we are, um, because quilts have been vehicles for speech and um, for generations. I have the distinct honor to introduce everybody to Luana Rubin, and Luana has had some of the best life experiences, and um, I'm, I'm not going to share them. I'm going to let Luana do that, um, because I, I don't want to steal her thunder, and I want you to hear it directly from her. I can tell you a few things, though. One, I have no idea how Luana accomplishes everything that she gets done. I have no idea. Um, she ha is amazing. She is very accomplished. She won the Michael Kyle Award in 2008, which is a Lifetime Achievement Award from the quilting industry. She is the chairholder of the Color Marketing Group, which is the premier international color forecasting association, um, which is so fascinating, right? Who doesn't want to help pick the color of the year, right? Um, if you know Luana or follow any of her blogs or any of her Facebook pages, you know that she is an avid photographer and so accomplished at it. Um, the things that she photographs, she brings to life. It's truly amazing. Um, as such, she's led tours around the world. Um, I think she's been to something like 46 countries. Um, makes you wonder how many pages are in her passport, right? Um, how many passports do you actually have, Luana? You, you'll have to tell us. Um, but 
all of this kind of centers and circles around um, Luana being the president and co-founder of an amazing company called eQuilter.com. It's based in Boulder. Um, it is one of the top online retailers um, for quilt fabric and sewing supplies. Um, I think they have something like 120,000 subscribers with about a thousand new products a month. So um, again, how does Luana do it all? I have no idea. Um, one of the amazing things about eQuilter.com is, um, and, and Luana and her family, frankly, um, eQuilter donates 2% of its sales to charity, which equates to about $1.6 million that have gone to a variety of charitable organizations. Um, they are also make comfort quilts for a variety of disaster relief organizations and efforts for orphans, medical patients. Um, it just kind of highlights and illustrates why we're here today. Um, Luana and her family are amazingly philanthropic. They are givers, they're doers. Um, and so I want to introduce all of you, if you don't know her already, to Luana Rubin. Thank you, Leslie. Um, okay, I'm going to cor correct just two things you said. Okay, correct. <laughs> I don't. I yeah. I don't choose the color of the year, but the woman at Pantone who does is a fellow member of the color marketing group. Okay, I, good. Yeah, I'm a chairholder and a facilitator in the group. I love and, it. And uh, I I would have been going to my fiftieth country this year, but of course, all of my travel plans have been canceled for the moment. But that's okay. Right. We have other things that we're working on now. So hello to everybody. I see lots of wonderful, happy, friendly faces. So I'm, I'm sending all of you love and big cyber hugs, <laughs> elbow bumps <laughs> and all that good stuff right now. And you know, I put together a lot of images to share with you because we all love images. We all love to look at beautiful things and color. So I'm just gonna jump right into that right now. So hang on, here we go. While Luana shares her screen, if anybody has any questions, pop them in the chat function and we will answer them as we can or at the end of Luana's presentation. Thank you. Well, look, I don't do anything on my own. I have a lot of people who support me, but also I have a lot of peers and friends who support the artist activism that I have been drawn into. And this has become more important in my life as I've gotten older, as my kids have gotten older, but also just seeing what's happening in the world today. I mean, I don't have to tell you we're in crisis here on Earth Day, but I also feel a lot of hope that on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day, that so many people are talking about this. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. So I'm an optimist. I'm, I'm somewhere between optimist and realist. You know, as a business owner, I have to be a realist, but I also ha have hope for the future. And for all of you who have contributed to this effort, um, the fundraiser for Earthworks, and also to make that possible for this quilt that we're gonna talk about to come into the collection at IQM, um, I'm, I'm humbled and I wanna express my appreciation to you. So we're all in this together, and uh, let's let's go through this little journey, this story, and see where it takes us. So, in case you want to keep track, these are the topics that we're going to cover as we go through this. I'm just checking the time here. We have about 40 minutes with a few questions at the end. So, welcome to our virtual tea. Have a sip, relax, and uh, write down questions. So, I live in Boulder, Colorado. Boulder, Colorado is an incredible place to live. I've lived 40 of my 61 years here. It's a community that's very eco-conscious, very health conscious. Uh, we don't have a large minority population, but we wish that we did. And it's a very charitable uh, community. And I've met a lot of amazing people in the art community, uh, fellow donors and so on. And I got started making quilts with a message for the National Parks exhibit. Uh, this quilt, it still has not sold, but when it sells, it's going to benefit the Wild Animal Sanctuary, which has rescued 
over 600, I don't know, it could be 700 or more uh, large animals like lions, tigers, and bears about an hour east of where I live here. My connections through our charitable donations have led me to many inspirations for the quilts that I make. So for instance, doctors, sorry, Engineers Without Borders, uh, the founder actually lives here in Boulder and we work with the CU Boulder chapter on a project in Nepal. And we also have worked the longest with the Houston NASA chapter. And it's through that connection that this quilt was made. And every quilt has a story. This is about the friendship between General Tom Stafford and cosmonaut Leonov, and how that was the basis of the US and Russian space program long ago. I was very fortunate to uh, meet the Carters several years ago. I've actually met with them three times now. This photo was taken last year in the living room of Jimmy Carter's boyhood home. And you that is inspiration. Uh, yes, and if you think that Habitat for Humanity is what they do, that's just a tiny drop in the bucket mm -hmm. compared to the larger picture of what they do at the Carter Center. And I have since, because since I learned what they do there, I've become a Carter Center ambassador also. But for the quilt exhibit, Her Story, I made this portrait of Rosalind Carter. Um, I asked her if there was a moment in her life that she would like to have captured in a quilt for this exhibit. And she chose this photo. And this was when she spoke to the Senate I think it was 82, about the, the need for um, upgrades and corrections in the mental health care system at that time. So here's the quilt that is coming to Lincoln, Nebraska to live at the museum. And I am so delighted about this, but this is actually the largest quilt I've ever made. I'm working on a larger quilt right now for another special exhibit, but this piece was made especially for the exhibit that opened up at the United Nations in Geneva. But there's a story here. How did I meet Earthworks? How did I end up making this quilt? It was because my daughter was poisoned in her public school. Mm -hmm. And over a year and a half of trying to figure out what was making her and other students and teachers so sick, I found out that she had super high, um, very toxic levels of VOCs, benzene, uh, styrene, and toluene in her blood. Kids should be at 0%, never more than the 20th percentile uh, compared to the rest of the adult female population. She was in the 85th percentile, uh, which is really frightening when we finally figured out which blood test she needed to take and we found out that's what she'd been exposed to. These are VOCs or volatile organic chemicals that are related to fracking. So this is how I ended up meeting Earthworks. We had some mutual friends who introduced us and they got involved with this question of what's going on in school. And through that friendship, some of those friends lived in Durango. And when the Gold King mine spill happened, and that's what this quilt depicts, uh, I decided that I wanted to tell the story of what was happening there. So this was part of an exhibit called Water is Life. And I have a friend named Susan, who is the curator at the US Embassy in Rome. And she invited me to be a part of this exhibit, Water is Life. And of course, there were several other artists who were part of this exhibit. So I got to go to Geneva. I actually went there a week early and I helped to set up the exhibit. And th this is definitely a highlight. It was a great honor to have my work seen, but also to be able to speak to the diplomats. Uh, there was also a conference going on about uh, Middle East peace. And I was interviewed by Al Jazeera TV about my work. So here we are before the show opened up, setting up in this huge hall. This building was originally the, the League of Nations building. So before the whole United Nations complex was built, there was just this building, the League of Nations. And some of you may be familiar with the history of that. 
So that's my friend Susan up on the step stool, preparing to hang another quilt. And just to the right of her is, uh, is my quilt, Rocky Mountain Poison. And on the left there, that's me cutting slats to hang the quilts. And it was really an incredible opportunity for me to learn how to hang a show. You know, I know how to make a quilt, but how do you hang a show? That's, that, of course, you guys at the museum, you know how to do that, but that was a, a new life skill for me. This is the space from the balcony looking down from above from either end and you can see it's quite an amazing space. I'm trying to remember there were 40 some quilts in this exhibit. And it was only open for a short period of time and it was not open to the public. It was open to the visiting diplomats who were coming through the United Nations. And boy, the security there, I mean, I had to be vetted ahead of time. They had to check me out and then I arrived and you go through several layers of security. It's quite, quite an experience. So at the opening ceremony, uh, this was the cultural attache. And after he looked at my piece, he shook my hand and he said, you need to make more quilts like this. This is a really important message. And I was, like, wow, okay, I mean, he, he said it so pointedly, I, I felt kind of like a lightning bolt go through me, like, oh, this is what I need to be doing. There were so many people who were touched by this piece. They saw it from a distance, they had kind of the overall impression, and they got close and they saw what was going down on the bottom of the quilt. So down the bottom of the quilt, it tells the story of the Gold King mine spill. And so that you may be familiar with this, this happened several years ago now. The EPA was messing around at the entrance of the mine and whatever was blocking there kind of exploded out and all this toxic orange sludge uh, flowed out and into the Animus River and then it flowed downstream. And so I told the story of that in the quilt. So for instance, in the orange parts of the, the water, I wrote the names of the waterways and the communities that were affected including the Navajo Nation, which was downstream. And you'll see that also some of the poisons that were in the water were stitched into the black part, which was made with a batik skull. See the skulls and the batiks there? So in this image, you can see mercury, cesium, and cadmium. And you can also see the Grand Canyon, Lake Powell, and Lake Mead, because ultimately these rivers are all a watershed that pour into the Colorado River, which flows through California and supplies water to tens of millions of people along the way. There's more of an overall. And so I had friends who were environmental scientists and doctors and uh, folks who work in various professional fields who lived in Durango and were testing the water and they were coming up with different results than what was being reported to the public. So they asked me if I would tell the story of what was happening through this quilt. And I said, yes, and the rest is history. <laughs> so this also traveled to Rome and the embassy there uh, hosted an exhibit in Frescati, which is uh, kind of a suburb of Rome up in the hills. And you can see Hollis Chatelaine's beautiful quilt was on the poster as we entered in a, a medieval building. It was quite a stunning setting. And then it traveled to Houston. And ultimately this quilt was seen by over 100,000 people. And the, re the reaction was always the same. People would see it from a distance. You know, the mountains are really quite realistic. And then as you come close, you kind of see, you know, what's happening with the, the orange water coming out of the mine, pouring into the river. And then you get up close and you see the details, the skulls, the, the words that are stitched into the bottom of the quilt. So uh, Leslie, do you have any question? or comment about that before I go on to some other topics here? Um, speaking on behalf of the museum and our curators of collections, um, and just really the team here, we are thrilled and just honored to have this piece. It is a stunning piece. 
Um, it's wonderful always to have a beautiful quilt in our collection, but a beautiful quilt with a message is really particularly poignant and special. And we just, you know, you, you talk about 100,000 people seeing this quilt and being exposed to the message and to the issues. Um, it's impactful. It really is and beautiful to boot. So um, on behalf of my organization and our donors and stewards and members, you know, thank you to both you and to Earthworks for just making this possible for us. Thank you, Leslie. And um, maybe we'll just tell a little bit of a story of how this came about. Originally, I had promised that this quilt would be dedicated to being a fundraiser for Earthworks. And we were trying to figure out how we would make that happen, whether we would have an online auction. And then just about the same time, but a little bit later, um, I was approached by uh, Leslie and IQM and saying, you know, we would be interested in acquiring this quilt. And I thought, well, let's get together and talk about how we can make this happen. So we ended up doing a fundraiser, raised the money. We raised money through GoFundMe over $3,000. And then we had an anonymous donor who sent a $1,000 anonymous check directly to Earthworks in New York, in Washington, I'm sorry, Washington, DC. And my very special thanks to all of the donors and especially uh, the one uh, large anonymous donor. So we raised over $4,000. And then Earthworks, after raising the money uh, to acquire the quilt is donating the quilt to the museum. So everybody's happy. <laughs> yeah. I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled because I, I'm very honored that, that this quilt will go to be uh, stewarded by IQM in the future and that that story will be told for future generations and hopefully uh, hu the human race will get its act together and, and uh, decide not to do things like this in the future. Yeah. Including the waterways and the earth. All right, uh, let me move on now. So in addition to making quilts, I'm also a curator and you mentioned a philanthropist mm -hmm. and I try to roll all those things together in as many ways as I can to invite other artists to participate with me to inspire other artists and, and also to sponsor exhibits that are trying to get important messages like this out to the public. And, and really ultimately my goal is always to inspire people to be, to have the courage to speak up, to see what's happening, to not look the other way, to not engage in willful ignorance and to say, I wanna be part of the solution. I'm not gonna be part of the problem of looking away and hoping somebody else will speak up or somebody else will take action. So one of the other projects that I've been working on the last few years, and I hope that some of these artists are with us today, is the Love Your Mother Quilt Challenge. Mm -hmm. And this was a kind of a dream that I had about creating this fabric design. This is a 44 inch panel, digital printed, with a uh, image of the earth from NASA, this beautiful rainbow mandala, and then the starry sky background. And Paul and I, my husband and I worked together to create this. And when it first arrived, when we first received a, a shipment, you know, of hundreds or thousands of these, I, I cried because it was like, I dreamt it and it came true. And then I thought, I, I want this to inspire others. I want to invite others to participate in this. So we put out a challenge. Uh, we ended up with an exhibit of 17 quilts and I'm going to show you the top three prize winners. Actually, we had requests for other panels, so we ended up doing three versions of this panel for the challenge. Uh, one with the continent of Africa, you can see in the middle here, North and South America, and then on the right hand side, Australia and New Zealand. And we had we had winners and we had participants from all of these areas. You know, Europe is always covered with clouds, so we couldn't get a clear picture of Europe, unfortunately. But anyway, we had these three, and, and I think it turned out pretty nice. Also, Bernina was a very generous sponsor, and they donated a beautiful new machine to the first place winner, which was absolutely thrilling for the winner and for me because I'm a Bernina mm -hmm. ambassador. So thank you also to Bernina. Um, I always have to thank them for supporting me and supporting this, this effort uh, by all the artists. 
This was the first place winner. Uh, this was by Elizabeth Budd. And all of these, you can see all of the artworks, both overall and close-up detail shots on my photo page. I'll tell you about that at the end. This is a large quilt by Silky from Australia. And this was actually purchased by a man from Australia who lives in California and was missing Australia. When he saw it, he became very emotional and had to buy it right away. <laughs> This is by an artist from Spain, Mervia. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm going to be bringing this quilt to the opening of the Gaia exhibit, which we'll talk about in a moment, which will be opening the end of June. And this is all thread painted. So the hand oh. squeezing the earth uh -huh. is all thread painted. It's heavily embroidered, and uh, it shows uh, a hand squeezing oil out of the earth. That's what the pool is at the bottom. And so this exhibit traveled to three different venues. This is hanging in Mexico City. And so it went to Houston, it went to Mexico City, it went to Chicago Spring Festival, and it was going to go to Birmingham to the Festival of Quilts this year, but unfortunately that has been canceled. So we are now returning the quilts to the owners or to those who purchased the quilts. But thank you to all the artists who participated in this. We're sad that the last exhibit was canceled, but um, we're happy that your, your babies are coming home to you now. <laughs> and it was a beautiful exhibition, Luana. Um, the quilts were gorgeous. And uh, it was interesting when I saw it in Houston to listen to the conversation that mm. was inspired by the quilts and the images that were included. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a great exhibition. It's always wonderful to, to be the fly on the wall and listen to the comments that mm -hmm. people make about quilts and exhibits, for sure. Um, I did wanna mention that many are using this panel now for, like the, I was at the Climate March and I brought this along as a banner and I actually gave away several of them because I had several people come up to me and say, oh my God, where did you get that? And I said, here, have one. Uh, so that it's going to have another life as a protest banner for the planet. Great. Um, I also want to mention my longtime friendship and partnership with Kathy Price uh, at Mission of Love. So we have seven charities that we donate to. You mentioned the 2% that goes to charity. Mm -hmm. And Kathy is an amazing person. I mean, you think I have a lot of energy and I do a lot of things. This woman is superwoman. She is out there flying literally military planes full of food and building materials and medical supplies. She's built clinics and hospices and she will send a school bus or an ambulance. Uh, so she does a lot of work in Guatemala. Um, if you'd like to see some really amazing photos, uh, go to my album page. And again, I'll give you that link at the end and check out the photos from Guatemala. This is a quilt that I made, a portrait quilt of Kathy that was in the Better World exhibit in Houston. Uh, Susan Brubaker Knapp and Lyric Kennard put together this exhibit. And you can see the photo. Well, there, this is one of the photos that I took of her, but you can see that's uh, the inspiration photo on the left for the, the quilt on the right. And I don't know if you can see that, but the, the C5 plane there, mm -hmm. uh, Kathy and Mission of Love are the single largest user of the Denton program, which uses military planes to fly relief supplies overseas for free. So for instance, after the earthquake in Haiti, when Doctors Without Borders, their clinic mm -hmm. collapsed and all of their supplies were lost, and that's one of our recipients too, Kathy was able to get a container full of medical supplies to them within two days. Wow. And, but she's totally under the radar. I mean, nobody's heard of her, but she, she does more with the dollar than anybody I've ever met, helping with children and indigenous people. Uh, she does a lot of work in Pine Ridge. So that's another long story. But uh, Kathy, if you're here, love you. And um, thanks for everything that you do. 
So you mentioned that I'm a photographer. One of the things that I've been doing for the past several years is about every other year I go up to Churchill to photograph the polar bears. And again, uh, you can go on my photo site and see some of those photos. Uh, this was a curious fellow that I encountered on my very first trip up there. I've been there five times. I will say the last few times I've gone, we've seen hardly any bears, which is heartbreaking. Uh, but I've basically been going up there to document and witness what's happening to the environment and to the bears. I'm best friends uh, with the executive director of the research, the Arctic Research Center up there, and she's a quilter. And so I bring her quilt magazines and quilt supplies like, you know, needles and rotary cutters and things like that that you can't get when you live in the middle of nowhere. And she tells me what's happening up there, and uh, it's, it's frightening. So anyway, this, this is the fellow. I just felt like I had such a connection with him. I've, I've had some very uh, intimate connections with bears on, this, on these trips. And this led to a quilt that I made that was made for the Endangered Species Exhibit, curated by Donna DeSoto. And there's a coffee table book for this exhibit, like many of these. And this is another exhibit that, that we, that eQuilter, was a sponsor for. And we are a major retail sponsor. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, there is really no other retailer who sponsors exhibits like we do. There are many manufacturers who do, uh, including Bernina, for instance, and several of my suppliers, but we have made a commitment to sponsor se several of these exhibits, not only in Houston, but at, in Birmingham and Canada, we've sponsored in Mexico. And so this is the bear quilt. Now take a look at this. And you'll notice, you know, what happens in this quilt, I think is similar to what happened in the Rocky Mountain poison quilt, which is your eye immediately goes to the face and the eclipse. It's called polar bear eclipsed. But then your eye starts to move down and you start to look at what's happening. And you realize that there are words that are stitched in. So this is another quilt that is, it's a message and it's meant to be, it draws you in with that beautiful face. I mean, he was just kind of like a dog sitting there looking at us. Of course he's not, he would eat you if he had the chance because he's so hungry at that point. Yeah. But then you get close and you start seeing what the scientists see when they look in the tissues of dead bears. And what I'm told by researchers, polar bear researchers is that it may be that the toxins in the environment will kill off the bears before climate change does because the cubs are not viable. They used to, it used to be that twins were the norm and they would even see triplets. Now they hardly ever see twins. Uh, the single cubs may or may not survive. Uh, we saw, for instance, one of my close encounters with a bear was a mother bear who obviously had just lost a cub because she was licking her udders. Yeah. Um, so the when the when the cubs are genetically damaged, then they're not viable and they often do not survive. So now we'll come to uh, the exhibit that we've worked together to put together, Leslie and uh, the whole gang there at IQM. They approached me. Really, it's been a year and a half, Leslie. I'm sure it's been at least a year and a half since you first approached me. And they, they said, you know, you travel all over the world, you see so many quilts, so many beautiful works of art, would you be interested in curating an exhibit? And actually, maybe I'll just pause here for a moment again and see if you have anything you'd like to say about what I just finished or what I'm about to start, <laughs> Leslie. Well, I think, um, you know, I, I had mentioned a little earlier that, you know, for generations, quilts have been a vehicle for people to express themselves and to get messages across um, in another medium. Um, and they can be, sometimes it's a very subtle message. Sometimes it's, you know, um, more blatant, but regardless, it, it's always done in such a beautiful way and such a beautiful manner. And, you know, the quilt that you've showed us, um, whether it's the Love Your Mother exhibition or your um, the endangered species, um, the exhibition that we're about to talk um, or discuss, all, 
all have important, important messages, um, especially for the condition that our world is in today. And those messages are so beautifully conveyed artistically. Um, it's just really fabulous. And, you know, you're at, you're at the center, you're at the hub of all of this, Luana. And so um, I would thank you again for your compassion, your philanthropy, your ability to bring people together and um, to create these opportunities to get these messages out literally around the globe. Um, and also to make connections of really fabulous people, um, wonderful artists and people and advocates um, getting to know each other and work together and, um, and have their work be seen by audiences that really need these messages. So um, it, it's, it's a joy to be included and to be able to work with you in a variety of ways. And, um, and you know, we're excited about the um, Gaia exhibition coming up and the pieces that will be seen. So, so take it away. Okay. Well, this started with Leslie approaching me with this idea and I started to percolate on it. Um, I was invited to curate at two other very prestigious venues in Europe. Uh, I'm not going to say them at the moment, but I'll say that they are related to the government. And when we put this together with this theme about the environment, uh, it was blocked by the current administration. So it is possible. Uh, we actually have three international, very prestigious venues that are considering, and one of them may or may not happen because of the virus and the other two are being blocked by our current administration because of the theme. But that's okay. Um, we brought together this incredible group of artists. You know, the, the Love Your Mother exhibit was a challenge, a quilt challenge, and this is an invitational. And these are all artists who I invited to participate because they have expressed over the years their, their activism, their passion for this topic. And many of them, we have spent many long hours, maybe over a glass of wine or a meal, just talking about what's happening to the planet and what can we do together? You know, what, what can we all do collectively and in, individually? So that's how this idea came together. Some of these pieces were made for the exhibit. Uh, some of them I chose uh, in my travels around the world. And, you know, I traveled to all these shows um, from Birmingham to Tokyo to Canada and so on. And so here is, this is actually a piece that I acquired uh, when I was photographing the, the Canadian uh, quilt festival a couple of years ago. It's by a Russian artist and she, she had to flee Russia for her artistic freedom. She went to Ukraine, then the Civil War broke out and she moved to France. <laughs> she met her husband there. And then one of her Russian girlfriends who lived in Canada said, hey, you should enter your work in the Canadian festival. And that's how I came to, to acquire this piece. Her work is very distinctive and I'm sure you've seen her work. This particular piece was in four different magazines after I acquired it. So I was just tickled that it got so much exposure. Um, so this is just one of the artists, but I'm gonna just go through and briefly show you the images of the artwork in this exhibit that's opening up June 26, God willing. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm planning to be there. You know, I can drive there, I don't have to fly. So um, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully uh, several of you can join us at the opening because I'll be giving a presentation at the opening also. And, and Sophie, my daughter will be joining me too. So we all exist together. And this is a quilt that I first saw in Birmingham by Hungarian artist, Katalin Horvath. On this amazing, beautiful planet. This is a piece by Susan Brubaker Knapp. These are uh, salt marshes. Full of bountiful life. This is by Carol Breyer Fallert Gentry. And she was actually working on this piece. Uh, some of these pieces, including this one, the artists were already working on them, didn't know where the pieces were gonna go. And when I said, would you like to make a piece? I said, yes, that's why I'm making this. I just didn't know it when I started it. 
and unique individuals. Now this, this is a portrait of a mother gorilla by Susan Devaney, who's an Australian artist. And also we have this uh, fish, kind of abstract colorful fish by Sheila Frampton Cooper. Living in harmony with indigenous people for eons. This is by Ihor Godin. I saw this quilt at the Canadian Quilt Festival last summer. Yeah. Now the quilt festival normally is in June in Canada, but it's been pushed back to September this year. I'm giving a presentation there also. And again, God willing, hopefully that will happen. This is a huge quilt on the theme of Australia. Much of the beauty now hidden or lost. This is a quilt by Hollis Chatelaine. And again, this was something she was already working on and then agreed to bring this into our exhibit. This is about the disappearing coral reefs. Fragmented Habitats. This is by Cass Holmes. This is a British artist. I met her actually when our local guild brought her to teach in my classroom here. And then I saw her again in Tokyo in January. And that's where she agreed to contribute this piece. This is one of the last pieces that came into the exhibit. And of course, we all remember what happened in Australia recently. This piece by Betty Busby really reminded me of that. And it's happening in many different places, not just Australia. And MJ Kinman is famous for her gemstone quilts. She's also come here to teach. And this is about the black, you can see the black diamond is eclipsing the, the blue waters which represent our planet. Uh, Kathy Nita does these um, amazing anatomical quilts. And I also learned that she's a middle school science teacher. I, I think I got that right. Uh, so now that I know that about her, I'm even more interested in seeing this in person and looking at it closely. This is one that I didn't get to see in person, uh, but I picked it out from, from a list of her quilts because it fit the topic of our exhibit mm -hmm. so perfectly. And of course, we finish with uh, Shizuko and her, actually this quilt was in Houston, but it just struck me. Uh, this is about beautiful earth and it just struck me as a very Zen-like expression of mm -hmm. all the different aspects of our beautiful earth that we live on. So that is uh, the end of that little chapter about our exhibit and I hope that many of you can come and see the exhibit if not to the opening uh, at least come and see it and all the other projects and exhibits at the museum and it will be running through the end of November. So uh, I, I see here that I also have a couple friends from the Wild Foundation who've joined us and they are one of our other charity recipients and I was actually invited to go and speak at the World Wilderness Congress in March as an artist activist and as a curator and philanthropist, but it was canceled due to the virus. Uh, it will be rescheduled. And in the meantime, I'm looking for ways that I can support their organization. But if you're curious to learn about uh, the Wild Foundation is at wild.org and the information about the Congress is at wild11.org. Let's see, we're, we're doing pretty good for time, huh, Leslie? I'll we're tell you a couple more little uh, stories here and then I will turn, turn over to you for questions, if we have any. So I wanted to show you uh, a couple <clears throat> images here from the Mexico City Quilt Festival, not this year, but last year. <clears throat> These were quilts that were made by the eQuilter Charity Group. And we brought them down to Mexico City to donate to immigrants who had to stop at the border. These are families with children who were living in um, very difficult situations, but they were brought into a, a house for immigrants and being housed there and we gave them these quilts. <coughs> Excuse me. So behind, I don't know if you can see this, but there is there are a bunch of small quilts that are hung and I wanted to show you this is another great example of 
art activism in our quilting community. This is the wall project by Lee McComas, and Lee actually lives here in Boulder. In fact, she's a teacher at my daughter's high school. And she invited people from both sides of the issue, both sides of the wall topic, to contribute. And she was very adamant that she wanted voices from both sides. Uh, as it turned out, 80% of those who participated were not too thrilled with the wall, which you'll see in some of the close-ups that I'm going to show you. So this was hung next to my Love Your Mother exhibit, and they were concurrent, and I think they were very complimentary. Mm -hmm. And the wall was set up so you could walk around it, and you could look at it from both sides. So you can imagine there was a lot of interest. You know, people would come and really take a long time looking at each of the statements and images. So I'll just show you a couple of those images. Mm -hmm. And you can see uh, the Love Your Mother exhibit in the background. So yes, we have donated over 1.65 million, I think we're actually getting closer to 1.7 million. And I, I say that with great humility because when I started this, 2% going to very, a list of uh, charitable organizations, uh, environmental organizations and so forth, I just had no idea that it would grow into this. Uh, we have raised over $300,000 for breast cancer research uh, both my mother and my mother-in-law were survivors, but of course I have many friends who are survivors or did not survive, and I'm sure all of you know many as well. Uh, and then of course, all these other, I, anyway, I invite you to look at our charity page and if you're interested in learning more about that. Uh, we've also contributed uh, working with Mission of Love and Engineers Without Borders, uh, donating 14,000, actually it may be more like 15,000 quilts around the world for disaster relief. And we still have a charity group that up until recently got together once a month to make quilts. And we provide the classroom and the fabric and the ladies show up and make the quilts. And then they take them home and finish them and bring them back. This is our new building. We're very proud of that. We moved in here a year and a half ago. And I'll just leave this up so you can write this down. You can find more of my photos on flickr.com. You can follow our blog or sign up for our newsletter. And we also have many videos, uh, including my many appearances on Quilting Arts TV and Fresh Quilting on our video page. I will take this time to thank both um, Earthworks, Jan and Paul, and thank you again, Luana, for um, your advocacy and your um, all around goodness. You just are an inspiration to all of us all the time. So thank you for everything. And, well, I, um, I, can only do it, I can only do it because of all of you and all of you who've participated, who have contributed artwork, who have inspired me. Um, just imagine if we were all working on our own. We inspire each other, we support each other, we educate yeah. each other, and my heartfelt thanks to all of you. Yes, well, and you had mentioned being in Lincoln for the opening of the Gaia exhibition. So stay tuned to the Quilt Museum's webpage, um, our website, www.internationalquiltmuseum.org. We will have updates and keep that updated as to what is happening um, with reopening and um, know that if things get changed or delayed, um, they won't go away. They may get delayed a little bit um, based on what's best for all of us, but um, we'll keep you informed and anybody who can make it to Lincoln for the exhibition and Luana's lecture, we would love to see you and have you. So um, anyway, I will say thank you again and hope everybody has an amazing Earth Day. Luana? Love you guys. Thank you.